when you have on your finest princess cosplay, just how many people come up to you and ask you to say, Hi, I'm Daisy. I'm Mac Fraser. I'm Back Rolls. And we're the Nintendo Nerds. We're a comedy and gaming duo here to help you craft and play your way to a better day. We met in the not-too-distant past during some spirited online Mario Kart play and discovered that we share a love for art, gaming, and all things Nintendo. And we want to share our nerdy knowledge with you. So stick around, because in today's video, we're here to talk with Amber, known on social media as Candy, about her self-built Princess Daisy cosplay. Thanks for joining us today, Amber, and thank you for joining us, we should admit, is the second time. We are- Round two. <laughs> we're just figuring out things <laughs> on our wobbly baby deer legs here, and we have a lost level episode. So we really appreciate you coming back again to talk with us again about your Princess Daisy creation. <laughs> I am happy to. Who doesn't love to talk about themselves? <laughs> <laughs> so, Amber, let's get right into this. Uh, the creation that you have made, this Princess Daisy cosplay, is the costume is not just something out of the bag. It's really quite a dress that you've built. Tell us about the process of construction, because this is something that you made all by yourself. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, step one of making this cosplay was definitely looking at fan art, and since it's Nintendo and Daisy, there's like so much to go through so you just go through it and you take a lot of liberties even if it's just 2d art they add a lot of texture to it as well um i also went through researching other cosplayers so i don't have to reinvent the wheel um see what has worked for others what can work better for things um and just what other people have already done to enhance her costume and really bring it to life from a 2d character to something real life and uh, like for example some costumes maybe look a little too orange and you really want to get that perfect goldenrod yellow right yeah absolutely i think that's one thing that you really really nailed was the attention of detail that you put into like pigment colors like that's something that is something that really shines in your work um the classic design of princess daisy and princess peach are also pretty simplistic and, and we really love the liberties you took here. It looks a lot more akin to the Super Smash Brothers design of Daisy and you actually built this before her reveal. It was a couple years back. So I, we really love the additional embellishments and the and the bows that you took and you, you made some beautiful fabric choices too. So it seems like pretty early on in the process you decided I'm not gonna go very traditional Daisy. I'm gonna take some departures here. Oh yeah, definitely not. I love Daisy, and like ever since I saw her in, I forget which Mario game, but probably the one that I play most often is Mario Party 8 with my sisters. Um, she's got a very simple design, you're right, and a lot of out-of-box costumes do stick to that simple, uh, very flat uh, look to it, but I really like it when cosplayers take it a step further and they add the textures they'll add like a nice print to it and uh it's funny you mentioned super smash bros that is definitely <laughs> there was a recolor that i'd seen of a fan art of her they recolored peach's uh super smash bros to be daisy colored and i went oh that's perfect Texture yeah, that's what I'm going for. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can definitely <laughs> see that. <laughs> I would think that one of the best parts of like cosplay design would be that you are allowed those liberties, right? Like you're you're kind of given a bit of a mold to kind of start from, as simplistic as like the design for Fiction Daisy may have been, you know, years ago kind of thing. But like you see some of these other cosplayers online and and pictures on Instagram and stuff, and the things that people will do, the character's still recognizable, but it de they definitely make it their own. And I think you did that here. And I'm such a nerd, like coming from a musical theater background, I'm such a costume history nerd. And so I love that it, it looks like um, a classic dress of royalty. Like you really paid attention to the <laughs> fact that like the, the petticoats need to be gigantic. And you, cause the illusion back in the, the 1800s was to like make the waist as wide as possible. So. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's, I it's mean, so that was fun. my own little secret too. So I found out that for historical costuming, big shoulders and big skirts make the waist look smaller and i went yes oh yeah go That's full fr I'm go <laughs> full marie antoinette french here let them eat cake <laughs> and talking about the shape um like this isn't your first time building your own cosplay you mentioned to us uh in previous conversations that being 5-1 makes it hard uh to find a costume that's going to fit your body well how did you find yourself on this journey of building your own costumes? Was an online order gone wrong or were you just not finding the right pieces and you started to learn how to sew as you went? Yeah, so 
Uh, in high school, it was so funny. I actually really, really wanted to take like an art class because I love to draw and I love to paint. But instead, they threw me into a fabric arts class and I went, okay, sure, I guess I'll learn how to sew something, whatever. And then I loved it. And then I realized because I was a poor freshman in, in high school, I can make these really pretty dresses. I don't know if you've ever heard of um, Lolita fashion, but mm -hmm. it's this subculture in Japan, really frilly, frou-frou, almost princess-like dresses. Um, nothing to do with the Lolita book. It's very important to establish that. No, nothing sexual about it at all. It's just very frilly and girly and poofy. For an audience who doesn't know it, like the closest we ever got was when Gwen Stefani did that Harajuku phase when she was totally appropriating <laughs> Asian culture for a little while in the early 2000s. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's probably the closest that we get to exposure of it. Um, but yeah, that one, I really loved that fashion back in high school. So, uh, obviously asian sizes run small for whatever reason and so i also didn't have a credit card at the time so i had to make my own which was always an adventure an adventure um, and i really loved it and i loved learning new techniques with every dress that i made because of course you don't want to make the same thing over and over it gets boring um and actually part of making daisy so the first it was if you've ever heard of if you ever watched uh, princess and the frog mm -hmm. Charlotte LaBeouf's big pink poofy dress. <laughs> I, 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 I love that character and, and you've mentioned before you love the side characters. There's this hilarious bit in that movie where she's like sobbing crying and her mascara is running and then she's like oh the oh, suitor yeah. is here and then in like <laughs> it, it's like a three second clip where she immediately just like wipes all of her makeup and it's just like perfect and a crystal clear. <laughs> it's it's really funny. We'll have to try and find the clip. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my. And that, I feel like that describes like me at every cosplay event I've ever gone to. It's just freaking out and then as soon as it's time to show up we show up you know <laughs> but so when, when i was her everyone kept asking if i was peach and i went absolutely not i don't relate to peach at all i'm daisy <laughs> oh that's where daisy came about it's just i needed another ball gown and people kept asking if i was peach not peach i'm daisy <laughs> hi i'm daisy <laughs> uh, yeah i'm daisy hello <laughs> I'll shout it as I throw a red shell at you. Thanks and goodbye. Right? <laughs> yeah, but also like she was the first Nintendo character that I'd seen who was brunette and had even slight, slightly tan skin. So I was I really identified with her when she first came out as a character. Well, um, not as the peach recolor, but as an actual character. That's, Absolutely. And that's actually a terrific segue, because one of the reasons we were so excited to have you coming on to talk about your experience of cosplay is that you are Asian and you like to go against the stereotype. I'm not going to just play Asian cosplays because that's boring to me. In an era where people like to really get upset about the skin color of a fictional Disney fish girl, it seems like anyone in the cosplay community can dress as any character they like. Um, if you connect as a character and you want to play as that character, it seems like that's fair game. And would you say that's mostly been your experience? I mean, I look amazing in all my cosplays, so no one's <laughs> ever said anything bad to me. <laughs> but it's definitely, um, it's such a huge community that there's there's good seeds and there's bad seeds, but if you surround yourself with positivity, then of course you have a positive experience. 200%. I think that's exactly the right outlook. No matter what artistic outlet you're finding, you gotta you gotta find the good people and you gotta be good to them. Uh, absolutely. Friends are the family you create for yourself. It's really important to keep those positive influences in your life for sure. So I can agree more. Back to the dress. Uh, how do you go about storing a costume that's like as massive as that Daisy cosplay dress? It's and so big. Are there, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of petticoats <laughs> underneath that skirt, and like we've seen many a wig online in your social media. Like, do you have designated storage for cosplay nowadays? A warehouse, perhaps? I really took my family's house for granted. Uh, my sister was also really accommodating because we used to share a bedroom. Uh, I took over maybe 75% of that room when storing them. While I was working on them, I took up the whole room. I just kicked her out. I just, <laughs> but actually storing it, um, yeah, it, it sits in a garment bag now, which I figured out after because prior to, I'd been storing it in, you know, those big bags that like you get uh, your mattress sheets in and all that. Oh yeah. Tore my ball gowns in one of those, and my friend saw it and went, "How dare you treat your ball gowns like this? They deserve garment bags." <laughs> <laughs> 
and it actually really worked out. They they condensed way easier that way. I'm not worried about the fabric getting a run or anything. And they have this little pocket in the front so you can store all the little like accessories, like her gloves or her earrings or her jewelry. Yes, in, in the theater community, that's called a ditty bag. They're super important because it's so easy to do. You lose one earring and then you just throw away the other one. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> <laughs> So we like to build out our artist family tree here at the Nintendo Nerds. So we always like to ask, who are your artistic influences? Who started you building your own costumes? And what artists inspire you to create? Okay, so my number one is Forever Yaya Han. She is the queen of cosplay. Um, and it was so funny when I first saw her was at Fanime in um, San Jose. And she was dressed up as Chun-Li. And I knew the character. But she had done something really different with it. She had added all these textures. She'd really changed the colors of it. She'd made it look really like something like what I had done with Daisy, basically. She had brought the character to life. And when I first saw it, I went, that's not accurate. <laughs> I feel so bad about it now, but I That doesn't look like those pixels friend. and sprites, ma'am. <laughs> well, that's not pixely at all. Those aren't pixels of blue. That's that's actual jacquard fabric. What? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> little did no, you know you were starting on your journey. <laughs> I know, little did I know. Yeah, as after that I I see I've seen her photos from then on and I've just been so inspired about adding texture and prints and bringing characters to life more than the 2d thing that you can get out of like a bag or off the rack it's just i really love that part of cosplay having that artistic liberty to really make something your own and to make it unique too because when you do something like that your costume will automatically be different from anybody else's costume exactly and if someone was wanting to teach themselves how to get started in sewing and constructing their own cosplay, where would you recommend? Uh, where does cosplay community like to meet and share? Cosplay community uh, has a lot of apps, actually. Cosplay Amino is something I can think of off the top of my head, but I personally don't like chasing people across all the different social media websites. My favorite go-to is YouTube because it's not, it hasn't failed me yet, and there's a multitude of youtube videos that are available to show one to so, show somebody how to make any kind of costume that you want and there's always somebody who's already done all the hard work for you so you don't have to keep reinventing the wheel there's also a lot of like really skilled cosplayers who make money off of doing the youtube videos anyways so it's really helpful to check those out but i also recommend taking a f sewing class like i didn't plan to but it is something that has helped me throughout my whole life it's so sad when i see someone who can't sew a button back onto their shirt even just a button if you don't learn any other skill learn to sew a button on your shirt button. you'll be so glad that you did it <laughs> <laughs> i i can't it's, as i've mentioned with conversations with other cosplayers i can't get anywhere near a sewing machine i've spent enough time to know that it's a recipe for disaster but i have so much respect and admiration for people who can adeptly handle one <laughs> I just imagine you like sewing your fingers with the needle into the fabric. It was and pretty close. Fabric it, was, getting stuck. it was definitely touch and go there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we all start out. I remember when I first sewed my first dress, it was, oh, I was like a snail. I like hit the pedal like every two seconds. It was so slow, but I was so afraid. <laughs> but you know, you just practice. Well, and, and, and that's something that I've heard from other sewers is that the trepidation will sometimes betray you when you're trying to work with difficult fabric. Sometimes you have to go fast. Definitely. And sometimes you just have to go stupid slow. Like if you're trying to do an embroidery on your machine, oh, Lord help you. <laughs> <laughs> So what other tasks are, what are you trying to learn these days with sewing and building? Is there anything that you're actively trying to construct these days? Um, I really, really want to make a bunny suit. <laughs> so I've made leotards before and it's forever been my goal since I learned how to sew to make an actual Playboy bunny suit that fits, which is a really common any kind of anime or cosplay thing it's such an easy thing that's like it's almost versatile and across all series yeah, anywhere and, and, and you say easy and that it could be used everywhere but easy to build one that is not the case it's those things are pretty it deceptive it is almost, it, yeah it's almost the equivalent of making a corset except it's got to be over bust and it's got to fit around of course your lower half 
which just makes everything that much trickier. Well, and everything about building something like that is is creating the female illusion too. Like the the the, the quote unquote hourglass figure. A lot of that is is <laughs> just like you said in the Princess Daisy costume construction. A lot of that is 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 in the shape of the build out of the piece. So. That seems like lots of interesting territory you're venturing into. We can't wait to see what you work on next. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm, I'll be excited to work on it whenever I uh, get space in my new apartment to snow again. Well, exactly. You're, you're here in the Bay Area like me, so that doesn't leave a lot of room for something like that. <laughs> not a lot of room for yeah, ball gowns. Like that, yeah, not a lot of room for making ball gowns, but thank God a bunny suit won't take up too much room. Exactly. <laughs> well, our last question today, Amber, you're in the Bay Area like me. You're doing demanding work as office manager for a major company, and it's fast, it's loud, it's chaotic. So how do you find time for yourself amidst city life? Is that cosplay construction for you? Is that video gaming time? Um, in our last conversation, it's uh, we talked about you wanting to get your hands on a Nintendo Switch Lite. So what's your me time? <laughs> Oh yeah, my me time is definitely, as soon as I'm home, it's YouTube or video games or if I have like an extra spare moment on the weekend, I really love cooking. It's kind of got the same appeal that cosplay does where you follow steps to complete something that's just absolutely amazing. But you can take your own liberties too. Mm -hmm. You can take your own liberties, yeah. I definitely Unless you're love baking, it. You have, you have a lot of a science. Time. Exactly. Cooking's an art. Baking's a science. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I, I said cooking. I said cooking. <laughs> I, cook, I, cook, I cook dinner. I go to the grocery store to buy my pies and all that pre-made because they come perfectly made out of the store, but yet one little pinch of salt too much at home and the whole pie is ruined. Well, it's so funny. Someone says, I, I cook recreationally, and someone says, oh, that's nice. But if someone said to me, like, oh, I'm a recreational baker, I know some of those, I'm like, oh, my. Type A alert. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, I would love to be a type A baker, but I just, I, I have a bunch of mismatched measuring utensils right now, you know, I'm looking at my guy and I can't find a quarter of a teaspoon anywhere. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that brings us to the end of the video. So Amber, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Thanks for having me. We're definitely going to include links to social media in the description below. Uh, viewers, if you have any questions, join us in our Discord server and let us know. As always, we hope you leave this video ready to pick up a pro controller, a paintbrush, or a pen. I'm Mac Fraser. I'm Backrolls, and this has been the Nintendo Nerds. <laughs>